everybody. How's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories and news stuff for this episode. Autodesk joins the 3D printer wars. This article is over at CNET.com. The company is aiming to make 3D printing as accessible to as many as possible, but it's going to be a little bit pricey. MakerBot, 3D Systems, and other companies that have dominated the lower-end 3D printer space have a giant new player to contend with, Autodesk. Wednesday, Autodesk announced its own 3D printer along with an open software 3D printing platform known as Spark. The company did not directly reveal pricing but said in a blog post that both the printer and the platform will be available later this year. But Autodesk CEO Carl Bass did reveal that the price would likely be in the $5,000 US dollars range. So, yeah, you can get it. Uh, it's a little expensive. From the BBC News in their technology section, Mozilla is going to test sponsored flags on Firefox. Uh, they've said that they will test a plan that puts ads and sponsored content on the boxes that appear when Firefox users launch a new tab on the browser. Uh, right now they display nine boxes or tiles showing screenshots of the websites visited most often by the user. Many users were concerned about Mozilla's plan announced earlier this year to add advertising to the boxes, but they have assured users that it is not going to turn Firefox into a mess of logos sold to the highest bidder. I guess time will tell before we'll see. From the droidguy.com, Foursquare releases its new meetup app Swarm at the Google Play Store. A few weeks ago, Foursquare announced that it would be splitting its popular location app into two distinct apps. Uh, the original Foursquare app will be revamped to help users find interesting places, while a new app called Swarm will be the one that comes with the check-in feature. Today, the Swarm app has finally been released over at the Google Play Store and is available as a free download, so if you want to, go check it out. From Daily Digest News, GM reveals pricing for in-vehicle wireless. General Motors announced Monday the pricing structure for its long-awaited in-vehicle 4G LTE service coming next month. The service will launch with a three-month or three-gigabyte trial period, whichever comes first. After that, existing OnStar subscribers will be able to use 200 megabytes of data for an extra $5 more per month enough to stream more than six and a half hours of music, according to AT&T's data usage calculator. OnStar costs between $200 and $300 a year. Uh, Non-subscribers will, re will receive the 200 megabyte package for $10 per month. That strikes me of early cell phone ripoff land, but got to make money somehow. From MercuryNews.com, the Moto E is a sturdy Android phone with no strings attached. It's not the most impressive phone in the world, but the Moto E at $129 US currency without a subsidy or contract is a solid Android phone at an excellent price. And unless you really have your heart set on a more expensive phone like an iPhone or a Galaxy S5, it makes sense to consider a phone like the Moto E or $219 for Motorola's newly updated Moto G with 4G, then pay $200 for an iPhone 5S or Samsung Galaxy S5 and get stuck in a two-year contract. So uh, this uh, story gives a nice little rundown of the Moto E phone. Definitely check it out if you are in the market for an Android phone. From MotherJones.com, if internet service providers are going to charge for bandwidth, why not charge end users? I want to toss out an idea about the latest battle over net neutrality. It's not an original idea by a long way, but for some reason it doesn't seem to be part of the current discussion, and I'm curious if anyone knows why this is. Here's the problem. Internet service providers like Comcast and Time Warner want to charge additional fees to companies like Netflix and Google that use a lot of bandwidth. On the surface, this is totally reasonable. 
If you use more of something, you have to pay more. Every market on the planet works this way. But why on earth would you charge content providers? It's hellishly complex and opens the door to onerous levels of regulation. It requires lots of lengthy and contentious negotiations, and as net neutrality advocates point out, it runs the risk of creating unfair discrimination against companies that are too small to pay or that ISPs just don't like for one reason or another. Besides, it's not as if content companies just randomly dump lots of bits on the internet. They do it only when an end user requests those bits by calling up a website or streaming a movie or downloading the file. And that is the crux of the story here. It's the users that are generating all this traffic from these content providers. Why not have the users pay for it? Pretty interesting article. Definitely read it. From NDTV Profit, uh, partnered with the New York Stock Exchange, Sony's top executives to return bonuses. Sony Corporation's top executives will, will return their annual bonuses as the company's electronics business struggles with losses, the Nikkei reported. Uh, about 40 executives involved with the electronics and headquarters operations will give up amounts equivalent to 30 to 35 percent of their annual pay as proposed by Chief Executive Kazu Harai, the Daily said. The bonuses to be handed back could reach as much as 1 billion yen, which is $9.8 million. Uh, Sony will report on Wednesday results for the year ended March 31st. From Mashable.com, Elon Musk will donate more money to build the Oatmeal's Tesla Museum. The Oatmeal's effort to save Nikola Tesla's old laboratory and turn it into a museum took a major turn on Wednesday when Tesla Motors founder Elon Musk committed to donating more money. Uh, led by Matthew Inman, creator of The Oatmeal, the campaign launched on Indiegogo in 2012 and raised nearly $1.4 million. However, Inman said those funds will only be enough to save the existing laboratory and that more funds are needed to actually build a new facility to house the museum. So pretty interesting. From Mashable, Parrot introduces an Oculus Rift-enabled drone. That's right. Parrot has unveiled its most advanced drone yet. The Bebop is tricked out with an HD video camera, built-in GPS, an array of image stabilizing sensors, and Oculus Rift compatibility. The Bebop's camera uses a 14 megapixel fisheye camera that records in full HD. The recorded video can be viewed in real time on a smartphone or tablet, which is used to control the drone with an iOS or Android app. The drone, can also, the drone can also be used with an optional sky controller, which includes four additional antennas that extend the Wi-Fi range of the drone to two kilometers. Pilots won't be able to take too many long trips, though. The Bebop's battery life maxes out after 12 minutes of flight time, so pretty interesting. From Petapixel, Sony officially reveals the RX100 Mark III. It boasts a brighter lens and pop-up viewfinder. Pretty interesting. Uh, the RX100 Mark III um, has a few things that are in common with the old one, but some updates. So you have the same 20.1 megapixel 1-inch CMOS sensor as the RX100 Mark II. However, this one captures the world around you through a wider and brighter Zeiss Vario Sonar 24 to 70 millimeter f1.8 to 2.8 lens and takes advantage, excuse me, of the three times faster Bion's X processor, higher end Sony's like the A7 series use. So should make for some uh, better photos. Only time will tell. The lens will make more of a difference than anything else. All right, that will do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. Once again, please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.